Hi, this is Anthony Fosichek. I'm here with Joe Roberts, who's the Democratic Congressional Candidate for the 3rd District in Ohio. The 3rd District is um, metropolitan Dayton, uh, parts of Clinton and Highland and uh, Warren counties, uh, and, and a significant chunk of Montgomery as well. Uh, Joe, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Uh, you've got about eight days left in this race. Uh, I'm sure things are, are picking up faster, but you, unlike many of the other candidates who are running for Congress this year in Ohio, uh, are a late entrant into this race. Uh, why don't you tell our, our readers and listeners about how you uh, found yourself in the middle of the thing? Yeah, you know, it was uh, there was a candidate who was running previously. Um, you know, obviously, under ideal circumstances, we would have started this last June. Uh, but we we have to do what we've got. So there was a, a candidate who was running previously. Uh, he ended up having to withdraw due to some family circumstances, uh, and so you know there's a need for somebody to step forward and, and run. And I think that uh, you know we really need someone who can challenge Mike Turner, uh, who is going to you know fight for working folks in the district. And so I, I thought you know this is the time to do it if there's ever a time. And and I I put my name in the ring and we started running. It was about. I think we announced in late May, so we've only been, you know, at this for, you know, five and a half, six months. Um, and like I said, you know, ideally we would have had 18 months to, to prep and get things going, but we basically had to, you know, do everything, uh, do 18 months of work in six months. So it's, it's been a challenge, and, and uh, you know, I think that we've done a good amount of work, and we'll see the results on November 2nd. Uh, this is a very tough district to win, and uh, Mike Turner is uh, he's the former mayor of Dayton. Uh, he does not make a lot of waves, at least not nationally. Folks don't really know much about him, even in the state. Um, and that keeping under the radar probably makes him uh, a lot harder to beat because people aren't necessarily uh, uh, he's not a very polarizing figure, at least he's not perceived to be that way. And I know that um, you know, we've run some great candidates in the past, uh, Dick Chema in 06 and Jane Medikaitis a couple of times, um, and, and have come up short every single time. You'd think at some point voters in that district would say, hey, listen, this guy really hasn't done a whole lot in, in the time he's been in Congress. Maybe it's time to give somebody else a chance. Are you hearing that at all, feeling it this year? Because it seems like there's an anti-incumbent um, attitude out there, but it's always reported as just being against the Democrats. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that that's the case here. I think we are hearing that uh, that grumbling that people are upset. Um, I think folks are, are sick of Washington uh, in this district, and things have changed even since 08. I mean, on the ground here, you know, we've lost DHL in Clinton County, which is about 50% of their employment, um, and the same thing goes for Highland County. You know, those folks drove to Clinton to go to work. And since DHL has gone, you know, they have been decimated. The two highest unemployment counties in the state are Clinton and Highland County. They also have the highest poverty rates now that in the past two years now that DHL has gone. Um, and so we are hearing that. You know, a lot of folks we're talking to say, well, I'm a Republican or, you know, I voted for Mike Turner in the past and I'm not going to do it this year. Uh, and I think it's just, you know, people are, are tired of it. And in the past two years as well, I think that he's, he's gotten more polarizing than he has been in the past. Um, he's really towed the party line. And he, he wants to talk about all this political ideology uh, in the time that we really need action and we need folks in Washington to, to look out for working people in the district, and they're not seeing it. And so I think that that is, you know, we are feeling that anti-incumbent sentiment against him, uh, which, is, which is pushing us a little bit forward. But, you know, I, I think overall, I mean, like I said, I think folks are just upset with Washington and what's happening there. And, and Mike Turner obviously is the first person uh, that they think of in this district anyway when they think of Washington. What would you say, you know, beyond DHL, and I know Dayton's been hit uh, particularly hard with losses of you know, NCR and, um, mm -hmm. and Delphi over the last, you know, half decade or so. What would you say are the top one or two issues in your district this year? Uh, jobs is number one. I mean, it, from, no matter if we're in a rural area, we're in the city of Dayton, everyone's concerned about jobs. Um, and rightfully so. I mean, like you said, we've lost. Uh, we, have the, we have the highest job loss in the, in the country in this district. Um, we've had eight consecutive or eight years of uh, consecutive job loss. So every year Turner's been in office, we've consecutively lost jobs. Uh, and so that's number one. Um, you know, beyond that, it, it's a lot of fringe issues that usually have to do with jobs. Um, but we are hearing, you know, people are concerned about other big national issues. People are concerned about the uh, about the debt. Uh, people are concerned about immigration. 
a lot of these issues that you know there has not been political courage in Washington to address, um, and you know that my my opponent has has kept mum about. So I think people are are a upset with with the job situation, and then uh, beyond that, I think that they're upset that the, that they're just not seeing any leadership from their representative at all. Um, again, you know, I was talking about the uh, the anti incumbency attitude and. and Turner's been one of these guys who uh, seems to bring home, uh, or at least is perceived to be bringing home the bacon into key areas, which uh, I'd say is like Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. But beyond that, there's really not a whole lot there. Do you get right. the sense, talking to folks in, in the Dayton area especially, that maybe, maybe this is a guy who, when he was mayor, kind of understood the urban agenda, understood the things that Dayton really needs, but but now it, it, it seems like he's completely lost focus and and is kind of do, off doing his own thing. Yeah, that's I'd say that's exactly. It. You know, we get talk, we get asked about Ray Pat uh, consistently. I mean, that is that is Turner's key issue. Whenever he's asked about what he's doing, he says, you know, I defend Ray Pat. And, and I always make the point to say, you know, Wright Pad is a great and crucial employer for the district. Uh, we talk about there's 20,000 jobs inside defense, about 24,000 outside that are support. Um, but that only amounts for, what, 44,000 jobs when we're talking about a district of roughly 610,000 people. So we, not everyone can work there. We need to make sure that we're not reliant on one uh, employer in this district. You know, that led to problems in the past. I mean, look at, like I said, Clinton County. You know, 50% of the people in the county were working at DHL. We can't have everybody working at Wright Pat. Um, you know, if we don't know, I mean, in the next two to three years, the BRAC Commission could come in and decide to move some of the, the key employment uh, groups within Wright Pat out of the district. And then, you know, we're in the same situation as what do we do? Uh, I really think that we need to look at diversifying our economy here. Uh, we need to look at bringing in new industry, um, being on the, the forefront of green technology. Uh, we have the facilities here. You know, it's, it's just a, a question of how do we get them retooled, how do we get companies to come in and want to be in date. And so that's what we're working on. I think that's, you know, I've been talking a lot with the county commission in Montgomery County on, on their focus on moving to more towards an aerospace economy and this green technology um, and how we could support them from Washington. And I think that there's some really good initiatives there, but they're not getting the support from Turner right now. Uh, and that, that, you know, that I could bring, as, even as a freshman member, I could bring some of the support um, from Washington. So that's part of it. I think, you know, another big part of it is, like I said, you know, this guy has gone to Washington and, and been a political ideologue in the past few years, you know, opposing TARP, opposing the uh, GM bailout, opposing the stimulus bill, all things that we've seen have either saved the economy uh, or, or started to turn around the economy and that are having a positive effect. And so, you know, I think, you know, look, if he wants to talk about a political ideology, you know, go teach political science. If you want to uh, affect change in your community and really improve this area, then we need to you know, get our hands dirty, sit down, work together uh, with Republicans and Democrats to make sure that we're doing things positive for this, for this community. Joe, uh, I know you're, you've got a lot going on. You, like I said, you've only got about eight days left. Uh, why don't you give our readers, listeners, your website address and a phone number where they can reach you and maybe send some money your way? Yeah, uh, our website is robertsforohio.com, and it's F-O-R, not the number four. I get that uh, confused. Some people say confused quite often. Uh, and then a phone number you can reach us at is 937-212-3377. Um, you know, we obviously we need the support. We're trying to get a big push out the last uh, the last week of the campaign, and I think you know it's 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 been a tough year for us, um, especially coming in late. So we could use the support for sure. Um, but we've we've run a great grassroots campaign, and and we've been focused on actually getting out and talking to voters and making sure that we're uh, we're going to turn the base out. And I think that's that's not only crucial for our race, but it's crucial for the governor's race here in in this area, and it's crucial for some of the other statewide candidates as well. Absolutely. Well, keep working hard, and thanks for all you're doing, and uh, good luck to you next Tuesday. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Joe.